Welcome back to Renal and Transplant Bullets Straight to Your Brain. BK stands for the initials of the patient from whom it was isolated from in 1971. It's a circular double-stranded DNA and along with the JC virus, both belong to the polyoma virus family. It has an icosahedral protein capsid and despite that, it's called naked non-envelope virus due to lack of lipid layer. We may catch the virus during childhood, but it remains latent in the renal epithelial and lymphoid cells, thanks to our immune system, particularly CD8 T cells. BK is an opportunistic infection, means it takes the opportunity with the suppression of our immune system, example with medication after organ transplant, and flares up. With the disappearance of the cat, the rat flares up. Methods of transmission is variable. It's from human to human, including PO, droplets, and others. In terms of diagnosis, once PK is activated, it may be completely asymptomatic or cause anything ranging from headache, fatigue, UTI, or respiratory tract symptoms. It may cause BK nephropathy, and important to know is the tubular interstitial involvement, pathological staging, and the special staining. It may cause urethral stenosis with subsequent obstructive uropathy. Also, it causes hemorrhagic cystitis with blood, urine, and dysuria in bone marrow transplant recipients, exactly as cyclophosphamide and adenovirus. Sequence of infection progression is as follows. It starts with decoy cells, which are in virally infected epithelial cells appearing in urine, then viruria, which is detected by BK urine PCR, then viremia, which is detected by BK plasma PCR, and then nephropathy. Moving on to BK nephropathy pathology, it's more diagnostic in medulla than cortex. Stage A is intranuclear inclusion bodies and or positive SV40 staining, which is brown. Stage B is composed of interstitial inflammation and tubular epithelial cell necrosis and mild to less than 50% IFTA, interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy. B1 is less than 25% of the biopsy involved, B2, 26 to less than 50% of the biopsy involved, B3, more than 50% of the biopsy involved. Stage C is more than 50% of the biopsy has IFTA interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy. Recapping, A, intranuclear inclusion bodies still inside the cell with positive staining, B, interstitial inflammation and tubular necrosis with less than 50% of IFTA, C, more than 50% IFTA. So here are very important slides that you need to be familiar with and may appear in your boards. These are the decoy cells. Remember, this is the first thing in BK to appear, which are the virally infected epithelial cells. And here by immune histochemistry, the SV40 stain, where the intranuclear bodies appear brown. And this is the typical tubular interstitial inflammation with lots of inflammatory cells. And here are the intranuclear basophilic bodies with the surrounding halo. Moving to the treatment, once BK viremia, you start to treat by reduction of immunosuppression, and it's a stepwise approach. First, cut MMF or MPA to half or hold it. Target prograft goal at 4. You might decrease the prednisone to every other day or 2.5 mg daily. You might switch prograft to cyclosporin with a target trough of 50 to 100. Some might give IVIG. We usually give 0.5 gram per kilogram every other day for four doses. We usually avoid prolonged course to avoid confounding results when DSA is checked. If you check DSA, do 2-3 weeks after IVIG. Other options with limited data include Sidofavir, which you do intravesical installation of 5 mg per kg, or IV less than 1 mg per kg, about 4 injections twice per week or once per 2 weeks. The problem with Sidofavir, it causes nephrotoxicity proximal and distal RTA, crystal deposition, and vascular injury. You might switch MMF to leflonamide, 40 to 60 mg per day, therapeutic level 50 to 100. The problem is it causes abnormal liver functions and elevation of liver enzymes. Other options include ciprofloxacin and mTOR inhibitors, but again, limited data to support. Furthermore, for urethral stenosis, you do stentor balloon, for hemorrhagic cystitis, hydration and evacuate the clot, and finally HIV 
you give lamivudine, zidovudine, and efavirenz. So let's spice up the discussion a little bit with the Q&A bullets. What's the most accurate way to diagnose BK nephropathy? Renal biopsy. What's the initial test to suspect BK nephropathy? BK plasma PCR. And they say persistent more than three weeks, more than 10,000 BK viremia. It's highly suggestive of BK nephropathy. Do BK antibodies have any diagnostic value? Of course not, because we said before that you encounter that during childhood. So it's not diagnostic. Anybody might have it. How do we monitor BK virus infection? You do BK plasma PCR quantification. So some centers, including ours, we usually check BK urine PCR every month during the first year. Once you find BK urine positive, you do BK plasma PCR. If it's positive with normal creatinine, you start dropping down the immunosuppression as we discussed before. If it's positive with elevation of creatinine, so just doing a biopsy. Peak incidence of BK infection is 9 to 13 months post-transplant. If you see any opportunistic infection with any of the following keywords, tubular interstitial nephritis, basophilic intranuclear inclusions, positive SV40 brown staining, appears in urine, decoy cells, causes hemorrhagic cystitis in bone marrow transplant, we're most probably talking about PK virus. Few more bullets. Rejection is more harmful than BK nephropathy on the graft, therefore priority is treating rejection. By the way, IVIG is a joker here. Also, you might give some pulse corticosteroids to reduce inflammation. Immunosuppression reduction and BK itself both may cause rejection, therefore some are cautious when deciding to biopsy. It's advisable only when creatinine starts to trend up. And lastly, be familiar with the images. Let's do a test. This is a 24-year-old Caucasian female with end-stage renal disease secondary to autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease who underwent a deceased donor kidney transplant 10 months ago. On routine labs, she was found to have BK viruria with a count of 150,000. She's asymptomatic and her creatinine is stable. What's your next step in management? The answer is A. Check BK plasma PCR. Depending on that, you will decide the treatment. You don't treat according to the urine. And since creatinine is stable, try to avoid a biopsy. For any questions or suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'll drop some references in the descriptions below and we'll update them from time to time. As always, thanks and good luck.